In the next set of videos, we're going to go through some things about the sound barrier and breaking the sound barrier. These are things related to waves because, of course, sound is a wave. Remember, we learned that sound is actually a longitudinal wave, which means the uh, oscillations of the air molecules are parallel to the direction of travel. Now let's first talk about what this word supersonic means. I mean, not only are there songs called this, but I mean, uh, this is something I think it's really important. First of all, what a supersonic means? It just means faster than the speed of sound. Now it turns out the speed of sound itself is actually not that simple to say. Um, because the, the speed of sound actually depends on a lot of things. So at sea level, it's important because it depends on altitude. Well, it turns out that the reason why it does that is actually because it depends on density and pressure. Um, so that's actually because, yeah, it depends on the temperature and the pressure and all sorts of other effects. But at sea level, the speed of sound, so I'll say V sound, is approximately 340 meters per second. That's about how fast it is. If you want to convert that, I think that's roughly 1,224 kilometers per hour. Uh, if you're American, you want to see it in miles per hour, probably. So it's about 760 miles per hour. So just to give an idea how fast we're talking about here. So what we're talking about is about one third of a kilometer every second. That's the way I like to see it. So obviously it's pretty fast, but compared to light, it's really slow. What is the sound barrier then? Well, it was thought this is the thing. See, it was thought that it was a barrier you had to cross. A barrier implies something that's difficult to cross. But it turns out uh, it's not exactly the case anymore. I mean, this is something, it's not really a barrier anymore. I mean, it's not really like there's a wall you have to pass. So this word sound barrier is a bit of a misnomer. I would just say, look, you just keep going faster and faster until you're going the speed of sound, and then after that you're going faster than that. Now it's not so simple because there's all sorts of effects and all sorts of challenges with getting you to go this fast, especially if you're in an airplane, for example. And we're going to talk about other ways of going the speed of sound, so other examples of things like planes, and cars, and bullets, and other things like that. But what I'd like to do then is just talk about a little bit what happens when you go, you know, near the speed of sound. Now we say this word Mach. So Mach 1, for example, equals the speed of sound. It's actually named after a physicist named Mach, oddly enough. So Mach 1 means the speed of sound. So if Mach, your Mach number is less than 1, it means you're going less than the speed of sound. So what they're doing here, these little circles represent these wave fronts of sound. So, you know, imagine you're sort of emitting one sound going like beep, and then a beep, beep. And as you do that, of course, you'd be emitting different beeps. And of course, those ones then would sort of spread out. So as you're going less than the speed of sound, what happens? Well, you're moving, and you notice your circles get a little bit squished together on the front side and a little bit further away on the back side, so behind you. This is actually an explanation for the Doppler effect, why the frequency actually increases in front of it, and that's because the wavelength here is shorter. Over here, the wavelength is larger. But uh, we won't talk about that at the moment. That's, that'll be for another video. We'll go into that in more detail. What about when you're going the speed of sound? What happens then is, of course, as you go forward, you know all of your different pulses that you emit. So let's say you emitted one back here the one that actually has this right here, this large circle. You emitted it when you were here. But as you flew forward, of course, that circle sort of, you know, goes out. These circles are sort of growing in size. But of course, you're going the exact same speed to where you're always sort of catching up to the leading wave fronts of all of your little circles here. So that's if you're going exactly the speed of sound. And if you're going larger than the speed of sound, you're going faster. See, if you emitted your little pulse right when you're here, that one has only gotten to over here, to this place. But you're in front of it. So you're sort of in front of all of your little circles here. Now what's actually happening? Well, maybe we can look at it a little bit nicer here. So this is sort of a little diagram showing that. So this thing is moving. So just look at the very first pulse that you emit right here. Just look at this very first one. See this circle right here? Just follow that one. 
See how that circle just gets farther and farther? So you're emitting lots of these little circles, little pulses of sound. In that case, that's just to show you a little bit what happens. Now what actually happens then when you're going the speed of sound, or as you're approaching it, what's really happening is that the air that's going around your airplane, it actually can't get out of the way fast enough. So what it does is it makes a shock wave. So this shock wave will actually be seen on a plane. Um, well, you won't really see it, I suppose, but it is there. And what happens then, of course, that shock wave is just a large difference in pressure. So what happens then, of course, you're going faster than the next wave front. And this shock wave is actually in the form of a cone. So showing you this, this is what we call a sonic boom. Now there's a reason we call it that. So imagine this right here could be a plane that's going faster than the speed of sound here. So it's going supersonic. In other words, it has a Mach number greater than one. So it's something going like this. It's not exactly realistic like this because this cone will actually be somewhere further back on the plane, but this diagram sort of shows what happens. This is what we call a conic section. And if you like to do math, you can see actually a conic section, in other words, this cone, as this plane flies over the ground, this cone will sort of intersect the ground. And where the cone intersects the ground it will be by this shape right here. And it turns out it's a perfect hyperbola. That's the name of this shape here. It looks like a parabola, but it's not. It's actually a hyperbola. Now, what's kind of cool about it, though, is that let's say you're on the ground here. So uh, this actually happened to me as a little kid because um, my dad was in the military. And lots of people in the military, of course, uh, we lived in Germany at the time on a base. And when we were living there, they weren't very um, strict about all the rules about flying the speed of sound. So what happens is, as the plane goes near the speed of sound, the air can't get out of the way fast enough. And so what happens then, it's a really neat effect, um, you know, you make this sonic boom. Now this sonic boom, what really happens is, that's because the plane, first of all, is going faster than the sound is actually going. So what that means for me, I just remember this as a little kid, we would look up and we would see a plane go flying across, but we wouldn't hear it. That's because if you look at this, here's the plane, but here's the sound. Now this whole cone here is going to travel with the plane. So we would be on the ground looking up at this plane, the plane flies over you, you don't hear anything, it's super quiet, until basically this, this section of the cone basically crosses you. And when it does that, because it's a shock wave, what that means is there's a huge difference in pressure. And that pressure, of course, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear a big, loud boom. So that means what this really shows here is that as this plane flies faster than the speed of sound, it doesn't matter if it's going Mach 1 or 2 or 10, the same effect is going to happen. This sort of cone, this cone here that follows it, is going to mean that there's going to be a shape on the ground here, this hyperbola. It's going to sort of travel. And as this thing basically reaches me, of course the plane will be way over here, right? Because then the cone will have moved like this right here. But by the time this sort of cone reaches me on the ground right here, that's when I'll hear the sound. And it will be loud. So that's, it's, it's not false to call it a boom. I mean, it's loud enough and it's, it's powerful enough to actually smash lots of windows. Now I remember as a little kid, I mean, we used to think it was funny. I was in grade two, for example. And whenever we were in class and someone actually did that, which the planes did a lot, uh, someone would always joke and say that they farted or something, right? They'd say, oh, excuse me. <laughs> but of course, what was really happening is people were flying faster than the speed of sound. Now here's an example of what's called a vapor cone. Now you might think, oh, does that mean that you can see the plane going faster than the speed of sound? Well, not quite. What really goes on, remember I said, as you go near the speed of sound, the air can't get out of the way fast enough. So what happens then is that the pressure actually drops very quickly. And because the pressure drops, it turns out the temperature drops too. Uh, that's because the air cools. Now what happens then is the air's ability to hold water moisture, it basically drops. So because of that, this moisture that's in the air super cools and it basically gets deposited as moisture in this cone here. So what it does, it makes what we call a, you know, a cloud of vapor. It makes like an instant cloud. So this is what we call a vapor cone. A lot of people call this, you know, this is the sonic boom, and it's not entirely correct. A sonic boom doesn't always follow a vapor cone. Um, and actually, more correctly, I should say, a vapor cone does not mean you're going faster than the speed of sound. However, the supersonic boom can sometimes 
actually follow this vapor cone. So just be very careful if someone says, this means this plane is going faster than the speed of sound, I would say, nope. It just means that it's going fast enough to where the air, which is trying to get out of the way, is actually having its temperature drop and that means then that it can't hold enough moisture and that means the moisture basically drops out and, and makes a cloud here. So that's really what's happening. So this condensation or vapor cone, I think it looks pretty cool though, right? I mean this is sort of a 3D cone that follows the plane. This is actually a plane called an F-18 and so is this and I think this right here is an F-22. But you can see these cool cones and you can see there's not only one cone, there's other places where the air is doing that. So it all sort of depends on what's going on here and how it's looking. But I think this is a pretty cool thing. This is a pretty cool effect, isn't it? That, you know, as a plane goes faster than the speed of sound, you get these cool effects here. So what I'm going to do in the next video is go into a little bit more detail. We're actually going to go into this diagram here, and we're going to define this Mach angle. And it turns out by knowing about that, you can tell the speed. So you can actually, if you're told a Mach angle of something, you can actually determine the speed of an airplane.